What if the moon isn't what we thought it was? What if that silent gray sphere we see every night is hiding something revolutionary? For decades, we've looked up and seen a barren rock, a place we visited once, planted flags and moved on. But what if we missed something big? What if someone else has already found it, quietly, without fanfare? While the world watched rockets head to Mars and billionaires launch into space for glory, another nation turned its eyes to the moon, not for show, but for answers. And what they've uncovered might change everything. New minerals, hidden water, a powerful fuel source that could solve Earth's energy crisis, and something even deeper, clues that challenge how we believe the moon was formed and maybe even how life on Earth began. This isn't science fiction. It's happening right now. And the question isn't just, what did they find? It's, what happens next, when the moon becomes the center of the next great leap for humankind? For years, the moon was seen as a closed chapter in space exploration. After the Apollo missions ended, most space agencies turned their attention elsewhere. Mars became the new dream, and the moon, a relic of the past. But science never stopped asking questions. Our understanding of the moon relied heavily on a few hundred kilograms of rock collected over 50 years ago from the same region, the near side. That's like trying to understand the entire Earth by sampling one corner of a beach. We built theories based on limited evidence, assuming the rest of the moon was the same. But it's not. Recent missions, especially from China's Chang'e program, have shattered those assumptions. By landing on unvisited regions, especially the far side of the moon, they've brought back something science desperately needed. New data. And that data tells a different story. Some rocks are younger than we expected. Some minerals are completely new. There's water locked inside unexpected places. And the far side? It's geologically different, rougher, older, more mysterious. What if the moon didn't cool and die as quickly as we thought? What if it's been hiding secrets beneath its surface all along? This isn't just about the moon anymore. These discoveries affect our understanding of Earth, the solar system, and even the conditions that made life possible. Science is waking up to the fact that the moon still has a lot to say, and someone is finally listening. For decades, the space race was painted in bold colors, rockets blasting off, astronauts waving from capsules, flags planted in lunar soil. The US and the Soviet Union competed under the spotlight of the Cold War. But what happens when a new player enters the game? not with noise, but with precision. While NASA struggled with budget cuts and shifting goals, and private companies chased headlines with flashy launches and live streams, China quietly built a roadmap. No PR stunts, no countdowns with cinematic music, just results. One mission after another, they began to piece together a strategy. Chang'e 1 and 2 mapped the moon. Chang'e 3 landed. Chang'e 4 went where no one else dared the far side. Chang'e 5 brought back the first new lunar samples in over 40 years. And Chang'e 6? Samples from the mysterious far side, completely untouched by human hands. This isn't a race to impress. It's a race to understand, and eventually, to stay. While others ask, can we go? China is asking, how do we build? Their missions aren't just exploration, they're rehearsals testing landers, practicing remote sample returns, mapping resources, preparing infrastructure. The world may still be dreaming about moon bases. China? They're laying the foundation for one. At first glance, it seems like a national effort. China, expanding its space presence, planting its flag among the stars. But look deeper, and you'll see something bigger. This isn't just about national pride. It's the beginning of a quiet shift in how humanity approaches the moon. For decades, we saw the moon as a trophy. We landed, we left, we remembered. But China is treating it as something else, a frontier, a foundation, a stepping stone to everything beyond. Their missions follow a sequence, systematic, deliberate. They're not rushing to be first. They're rehearsing how to stay. 
They're drilling into the surface not just to study it, but to learn how to build with it. They're testing autonomous systems that will one day assemble habitats before humans arrive. They're analyzing soil for oxygen, hydrogen, and fuel, resources that could sustain life and power rockets deeper into the solar system. The message is clear. The moon is no longer a finish line. It's a launch pad. And whoever builds the first sustainable presence there won't just make history. They'll define the rules of the next space era. This isn't China's mission alone. It's a reflection of what humanity will eventually have to do. Leave home. Not for conquest, but for continuity. Not just to explore, but to endure. Imagine this. In 20 years, Earth's energy crisis is solved. Not by a new invention, but by a new resource. A mineral once hidden in the lunar dust, storing helium-3, is now the fuel for clean, limitless fusion energy. No waste, no radiation, just power. And imagine that the nation harvesting it is the one that arrived early, prepared, and built the infrastructure first. What does that world look like? Maybe the moon becomes humanity's largest power plant, silent, distant, but essential. Lunar bases extract resources, process them, and launch energy solutions back to Earth. Nations negotiate over orbits and landing zones. Space becomes the new geopolitical chessboard. Now imagine water is no longer a barrier to deep space travel. It's mined directly from the moon's soil. Rocket fuel is made on site. Astronauts live in habitats built from lunar bricks, powered by helium-3, drinking water once locked in crystal salts. Suddenly, Mars isn't so far. Suddenly, space isn't impossible. Suddenly, the moon isn't the destination, it's the gateway. And in this future, the country that first treated the moon seriously, systematically, strategically, holds the key. This isn't science fiction. It's a scenario that begins with today's missions, the rocks already collected, the data already changing how we see the moon. The future may not be written in the stars. It might be buried in lunar soil. For decades, we looked at the moon and thought the story was over. But the moon, it never forgot us. It waited, quietly, holding secrets beneath its surface. Clues about how planets form, evidence of ancient volcanoes, traces of energy and water, gifts for a species ready to listen. And now, someone is. China's space program didn't just revisit the moon. They asked new questions. They touched ground no one had dared to reach. They brought back pieces of a forgotten history and changed what we thought we knew. This isn't about one nation's success. It's a reminder. The moon still matters. Not just for science or energy or survival, but for vision. Because how we treat the moon today will shape how we explore everything beyond it. Will we claim or will we collaborate? Will we repeat the old race or write a new chapter? The moon is no longer just a glowing circle in the night sky. It's a mirror, reflecting our ambition, our fears, and our future. And the next giant leap for humanity? It might not come with a flag or a live broadcast. It might begin with a robot, quietly drilling into lunar soil. Because progress doesn't always shout. Sometimes, it whispers from the far side of the moon.